Oh, that was something else hilarious. We were on this train and uh, in a carriage, and obviously we were sat on the roof or in a truck, but um, there were some drivers, uh, three or four drivers just opposite us, and they were, they were clearly Deltic fans and hated HSTs. Uh, and they were saying, oh, Intercity 125 is bloody two-stroke T-strainers, because they sound crap. <laughs> and the hair in the ears, 125s were four-stroke and Deltics were two-stroke diesels. But the unusual thing was, this, I think right, this is unique, Deltic engines were so complicated that two strokes don't usually have valves or camshafts. It's all done by transfer pots. The um, now then the air and fuel are drawn into the sump and then they're transferred through the casting of the cylinder the, the block and into the cylinder and the exhaust gases come out through a hole in the side of the cylinder in the same way as the piston covers them and uncovers them. But Deltics was so complicated that they had to have valves and camshafts to operate. And lubricate now, because usually two strokes are lubricated by the fuel if the diesel or if it's pe petrol two stroke, you put lubricating oil into the into the petrol. But Deltics had lubricating oil as well. And you imagine lubricating an engine shaped like that with a sump on each corner. How would you do that without it all running in the bottom? Gonna be a bit like a Rolls Royce Vulture, those engines that killed my uncle, yeah. You wouldn't expect a bad Rolls Royce aero engine, but a V12 on top of a V12. Well, all the, all the oil's going to drain at the bottom one, isn't it? Yeah, it was a bad idea, that, and that was a problem. The oil used to, they used to um, get starvation of oil on the big ends, and I think, yeah, the big ends. And when I looked at a, a cutaway diagram of, of a, a vulture, yeah, the smallest big end, I think, one of the smallest big ends is on the top. The, the, there's the three big ends to make a, a, an X. Well, three, the three part big end. And the big parts at the bottom. Was it at the bottom or the top? I can't remember, but yeah. They're a really bad idea and they were under production. Well, they started making them and they could, they'd never even reached the um, predicted power output. But this this uh, un unknown engine that was doing rather well was uh, was um, under the development and it was way beyond the, the, the predicted power output of the, of the, uh, the Vulture under development and it was um, well in excess of anything and uh it was put into a it was going to be a manchester mark ii but they thought no we can't call them a manchester they've got such a bad name i think half the fleet were lost due to engine failure and they put four of these engines on and made them a bit bigger and called them lancasters but my uncle didn't do that badly actually because he's i found his flight log most of the pages were torn out, apart from there was one page with four flights on, and the last one was the Manchester, and the average life expectancy of a Lancaster crew was only four missions. So he had four, more than four missions, so he didn't do them that badly, really. But I don't know, I mean, I think he was a, he was a volunteer in, in, in the, for, on, for Bomber Command, and um, <coughs> that's the thing. Um, I've forgotten. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah, he didn't do that bad living for missions, but I think he was just involved with transporting air aircraft around the country. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, the, the Manchester he, he was on it had made a fast landing due to engine problems, they'd fixed it, and he was just on the crew bringing it home. He was a wireless operator, air gunner, and um, they were circling the home base waiting for permission to land, and both engines failed. <laughs> 